Divas and what's up Divos? It's your girl April and it's time for Real Talk Wednesday. If you guys notice, I am somewhere different in my room. I get bored really easy and I thought it was time for a change. So I decided to move my videos to the other section of my room. So that way I can get like this feng shui ambiance going. Okay, so before I even get into this video, I wanted to share something with you, which I will be posting up very soon, is a new cheapskate haul video and it is to help them girls you know, them girls sit up, okay? So, I know you guys are probably like, huh? Yes, ladies. For those of you who are gravity challenged like myself and like to wear like the push-up bras or bras that give you like that nice cleavage, but you do realize that they cost, those type of bras can run you a few bucks. I do have a website which is called YYW that I'm going to be doing a video on of some brassiers and tummy holders for really inexpensive and a super duper 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 work. So today I have on one of my bras and ladies, yes, they are sitting up, they are comfortable, nice back support for these bras, nice shoulder support with the straps, beautiful design and I will show you all of that in my Cheapskate video. So if you guys wanna see that, just make sure to thumbs this video up or leave a comment below saying show us the bras or something like that because for those of you who like good lingerie good undergarments beautiful undergarments but don't want to spend that Victoria's Secret money then let me tell you guys I found a site for all of us okay so let's get into this real talk uh, for today I am rocking a clip-in ponytail well not a clip-in ponytail they're clip-in extensions and I brushed, brushed it up into a ponytail because you guys know it's hell of a hot out here in Arizona okay so let's begin okay so you guys first of all this one is going to be two episodes and i will promise you this the first one that i read to you you are not going to want to miss i was like what drama 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 on the social media okay so it is a long email and i'm going to just read it for what it is okay congratulations on your happiness and divorce you can pick a name for me i don't know what to call myself other than miss fucking tired thanks i'm so sorry for this being long so i don't really know if i want to call her miss fucking tired throughout the entire video so we're gonna call her miss tired Okay, I'm recently out of what I thought was a, re a good relationship with my ex. We have no children together, but I have three children, ages 22, 18, and my youngest, 12, and two grandchildren, ages 2 and 1. Everything started back in January of this year. Me and my 12-year-old son, my ex, and my ex's sister and her kids were all at her house. She lives right next to me in the adjoining building. Everything before that night was fine. We honestly had no problems. He got along beautifully with my kids, meaning her ex. Him and my 12-year-old son were like best friends. I let them, I let my then boyfriend use my phone to check his Facebook messages. He was looking through a message from his oldest daughter who had just turned 17. While he was on my phone, he was playing a game with my son and my phone died. I'm one of those people who can't use other people's bathrooms the way I'd like to. So I went home and charged my phone. Girl, I know what you mean. I like to use my own bathroom too. We both forgot he was still logged in on Facebook, on my phone. When I was ready to go back to his sister's house, I turned the phone on and heard the, and heard the alerts from Facebook and thought it was my messages from my account. When I looked, there were messages from this other chick, Erica. I'm not going to put her last name in, but she gave her a name. I'm just going to call her Erica. I didn't get to see much, but when I asked him about it, he said she was an old friend from like 15 years ago who had a daughter who was dying of cancer. Okay, I let it go. Then a few weeks later, his sister, my ex's sister, got sick, and her daughter also went into labor. I had to babysit my ex's nephew and her house, his sister's house. My ex wouldn't do it. So while I was there for four days, I had my son with him, with me, excuse me. My ex and my son were together again. My then boyfriend would come check in and out, then eat and then leave. In the meantime, nothing had changed. He mentioned going to see his oldest daughter in Albany, New York. Mm, my old stomping grounds from where I'm from. 
Well, I am from there, but that's where I moved from. But said he didn't have the means, the money, to get to Albany, New York. That someone was supposed to send for him. Now, in between the time of my questioning him about his message on Facebook on February the 6th, my ex went as far as to surprise me and move into my apartment building, renting a room from an elderly lady on the first floor, saying he wanted to be closer and show me he could be the man I needed him to be. That he was serious about wanting to be with me. But the next night, February 6th, he and my son were hanging out, talking, playing again like they used to. My oldest daughter came over and while we were talking, I heard rings and dings on my phone. So I knew my son was on my phone playing games. I told my daughter to go mute the sound on the phone. Because I guess it was irritating. It can get kind of irritating. She came back and told me my son was on my ex's Facebook. I asked my son how did he get on Facebook. And he told me that my ex gave it to him. And told him it was okay. Because he said so. I took care of my son with that and confronted my ex about it. I saw that not only was he with me and planning on being with that Erica chick, he had argued and told his oldest daughter, who had just turned 17, who he wanted to visit in Albany, that he was supposed to go, um, he was supposed to go see, he was supposed to go see her and spend that Saturday, the 5th, the 7th, at her house. And for her to go find, get one of her friends that just turned 17, so he could fuck for the rest of the weekend before he came back to the Bronx to me. So basically, her ex-boyfriend spoke with his daughter via Facebook, who was 17, and informed her that he was coming to visit in Albany on the 7th, and for her to find a friend, which is one of her own friends, who are 17 as well, so he can fuck them for the weekend and th before he comes back to the Bronx to Miss Tired. That's when things got hot and physical. I broke up with his fucking ass and he started to hit and choke me. My daughter locked the kids in the bedroom and jumped across the couch and got him off of me. He has never done this before. We got his ass. We both got his ass. That whole weekend, instead of going to see his daughter and that other chick, he stayed stalked, harassed, and threatened me and my kids. The police was called and said that because this was all over Facebook, it was, it was childish. Never mind the goddamn bruises on my neck, face, and my daughter's busted knuckles. That Monday, I went and got a full temporary stay away order protection with no third party contact through person of electronic device that was finalized and extended for two years. A few days later, he violated telling my daughter that the OP wasn't going to do anything, order protection. That the order protection wasn't going to do anything. Since that weekend, he's been following me, admitted to stalking me, called and threatened to cut my face on my voicemail and put a hit out with his friends to have me shredded by two men telling me, yeah, we see you, shorty. Then I was given a temporary criminal order protection with no incidental contact that he's violated six times already. I'm on my seventh now and court is July 9th. He keeps doing petty violations and the judge isn't taking anything he's doing serious enough. He has three prior cases for domestic violence and one of assault and battery being a woman battery against a woman in 2011 of no intimate relations. None of his fucking family told me. I had to find out in court. What else can I do? I've done everything I could and even left for a few days and he followed me to where I went. I also posted most of his business on his Facebook page and she gave me the link to his Facebook page. While I was posting I found out that the other female was using the money she was receiving donated to her to stay at the hospital in Albany with her daughter for treatment was being spent on him. Wow. So her daughter was really dying of cancer. Shit, honestly, if I could, I would blast her ass too. She would think someone with a dying, you would think someone with a dying daughter would be more focused on their child and not the next niggas did. Yeah, she's married too. Her Facebook page is, and I got her Facebook page too and I looked at it too. So Miss Tired is more than Miss Tired. Is this more than Miss Tired? So she has been messing with this dude who is now her ex-boyfriend. She has no kids with him. She does have three kids of her own who are 22, 18, and a 12-year-old, as well as two grandchildren. Now, her ex and her ex's sister kind of share the same apartment building. They live in adjoining apartments or adjoining buildings. Same apartment building, adjoining buildings. And he's taken it so far as to move downstairs from her and rent a room from an elderly lady. But not only that, um, he's a pedophile. 
Miss Tired, your boyfriend, we're going to call him Michael, is a pedophile. How could you dare call or contact your own 17-year-old daughter and tell your daughter to find some one of your, one of your friends that's your age so that I can fuck him for the weekend before I go back to my girl in the Bronx? Who does that? So you're a pedophile. At 17, you want to fuck a 17-year-old? You're a grown-ass man. You're an old grown-ass man. If Miss Tyre has a child that's 22 and 18, I can only imagine he's got to be in the same age bracket. So that means you're a nasty-ass old fucking man. Also an abusive old man. He has violated seven violations, and it seems like the justice system is not doing anything for her. He has threatened to cut her face. He has threatened to have people shred her to pieces. She has gotten threats from numerous people outside of her home talking about they see her. She has lost all contact with him. But, Miss Tyre, here is what you're doing incorrectly. Now, you're not supposed to have any contact with him. He's not supposed to contact you through any type of device, through any type of third party, through any type of way. Well, what you're doing wrong is you're kind of like leading him on into a, some... You're just kind of leading him on. And you're with posting his business on his Facebook page. Let me tell you something. For one, he's already crazy and deranged. Okay, and we see this now because he's stalking you and he is threatening you and he's already put hands on you. So you and your daughter had to fight him off of you, okay? But he hasn't stopped yet. You've gotten six or seven orders of protections, all different types of order of protections against him. And yet he's still coming back and he's still threatening you. So it seems like he doesn't have anything to lose. It seems like that's what his issue is. He does not have anything to lose. However... By you posting his business on his Facebook page, you're making matters worse. What you need to do is cut all ties. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you are pissed off about the whole situation, how he was with the next chick and you at the same time. I get it. I would be totally pissed off too. Totally pissed off. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that would be pissed off about the situation. However, you're not making the situation any better by posting his business on Facebook. Or better yet, on her Facebook. I've seen her pictures, and I've seen her pictures. Um, I don't want to put her name out there, but she's married. She got her own bridges to burn, okay? So this lady that your ex is cheating with, she has a man, a husband. So that's her own fault. That's her own bridges to burn. I would not worry myself too much about her. And yeah, that's kind of fucked up. You are right that the ex's um, so-called Facebook girlfriend is using funds that she's received from donations for her dying daughter who's got cancer to spend and trick on Michael, your ex-boyfriend. That's kind of fucked up. You got a kid. It doesn't matter what your kid has. I would never take money from no my, none of my children and spend it on anybody except for them. I don't care. Man, female, dog, cat, whatever, relative. You're not getting my kid's money. And especially if my kid is dying of some type of terminal disease. But you know what? The lady on Facebook, Erica, who's, who's fucking your ex and has got a husband and has a dying daughter of cancer and she's done dirty, she's just done dirty shit by taking the money that's supposed to help her daughter's, um, like, um, just basically her daughter in general. God will punish her. God always sees a way for those. God looks out for his children, okay? So you don't have to worry, Miss Tyre. I wouldn't worry myself too much about what Erica is doing and what she's not doing. Okay, let her deal with her own bullshit. There'll come a time in everyone's life when they have to reap what they sow, regardless of they may thought they've gotten away with it, or, oh, I got away with this shit, I ain't got to worry. Yeah, true indeed. We all reap what we sow, and we all have to pay the price of some shit that we've done in life. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a goody good too, shoe because I got to pay the price of what I've done in life, too. You know what I'm saying? I've done some ill-mattered shit along, along my life as well. And, you know... I either paid the price for it or I will sooner or later. However, the one thing that you do need to worry about is yourself and your children's safety. Um, unfortunately, the only suggestion that I would have for you, not the only, but one of the suggestions that I would have for you is there are many different types of agencies that help women, families in this type of situation. Domestic Violence Shelter is one of the things that are really, really a good resource. Um, and I know in New York there are quite a bit of them. And they're called, they're just domestic violence shelters. And a lot of them are ran through the YWCA. And social services does help pay for your stay there. 
um, because it is funded, you know, they do take donations. But a domestic violence shelter is basically a, sh a, a home, a home where no one can visit um, with women and children who have been in a situation like yourself. You're being stalked, you're being threatened, bullied, beat on, what have you. So in these type of situations, like with a domestic violence shelter, they help you relocate. Um, if you don't want to leave the Bronx or you don't want to leave New York City per se, you can always stay at a domestic violence shelter and they will help you find new boarding for you and your family. They'll help you find new furniture. They'll get you, they'll just basically get you on your feet and out of the situation. And it seems like the situation that you're in is one that really needs to be taken care of really soon. You're living in the same kind of adjoining building where his sister lives at. He knows where you live at. So, of course, stalking you and intimidating you is going to be really easy for him because he knows your dwellings. He knows where you're at. And I know a lot of people don't like to move. They don't like to up and move. But sometimes that type of situation calls for that drastic measure. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to say I left a domestic violence shelter, but, I mean, excuse me, a domestic violence relationship. But I did up and move and get away from my husband, my ex-husband, because the, the, the relationship was unhealthy for me. It was like totally unhealthy, like unhealthy. And I really moved. Like I moved from New York, where I lived at, Albany too. I moved from there all the way to Arizona. You know what I mean? Just to get the fuck away from him. I could have moved in a town nearby, whatever. But you know what? For just my sanity and not even my safety because he gets a little drunk and he gets a little mouthy too. And then sometimes I got to put hands. I like to put hands. So for my own sanity and for me to be stay free from behind bars, I think it's best for me to just up and move and uproot my kids and move somewhere where I know that my life is going to be a whole lot better. And just to get the fuck away from him. Because I know for a fact that if I would have stayed in New York, he knew where I lived. He would have been stalking and irritating and bothering and drinking and coming around and harassing me then. And then what would have happened? I would have either had to went upside his head or my man who I'm with now who is also the father of my middle child. And is also from the same town where we lived in. He would have had to go upside his head. And I don't think it's fair for my, for me or my man to have to go upside somebody's head. And have to pay the consequences of going to jail. So the best thing for me to do was to move. Now, in your situation, you've you got it way worse than what I have it. And I, I will admit to you, girlfriend, you are very strong-willed because I would have been up and moved a long time ago because I just can't deal with the dr drama and feeling unsafe, you know? And for people like him, the littlest thing you do is going to spark a flame with him. So posting his business on Facebook is not cool to do, you know what I'm saying? You are starting with him, and you're giving him a reason to come back at you. If you don't want him to give you a reason to come back at you, then leave him the fuck alone. Continue letting him do what he does. It's not going to help either, but you're playing a part in it when you're, when you're post Facebooking. And the shit all started from Facebook. And I'm the type of person, and I know there's a lot of people out there who don't like their business put on Facebook, okay? That, to me, is like an embarrassment. And it's like, okay, now you're playing me, you're coming on social media, and you, you, you're making a mockery out of me. And that shit is not cool. And it gets all kind of tempers flaring and flying, emotions going here and there and here and there. Let him do that bitch. Let him deal with the headache. Unfortunately, you didn't know you had a firecracker until it exploded. And that's the unfortunate. Why would his family tell you about him? Some families will. Some families won't. Me, per se, I'm the type I used to tell my, my, um, my son's girlfriend, who has a child with him, you need to leave him alone because he got a problem with his behavior. He's got a problem with his attitude and he needs to keep his fucking hands to himself. You need to leave him the fuck alone because he's not worth it. You are too good for him. He does not deserve you. This is the type of shit that I would tell her because I'm that type of mother and I know what it feels like to go through shit like that. So as me being a woman, regardless if that's my son or not, I'm going to tell you, listen. Don't fuck with him. And yeah, maybe his family should have told you that, but it's really not their place. But if they were, you know, more humane, they may have just said something about it to you, forewarned you. But you know what? Maybe they really didn't know either, okay? Maybe they really didn't know the drastic measures that he's taken in the past. Some things are just hidden behind walls, and we're, we're, we're blind to a lot of shit, you know what I mean? 
blind to a lot of things. I was blind for, to a lot of things with my ex-husband. So even though we're family, we may not know everything. She may not know everything, his sister. You can't fault her. But what you can do is stop Facebooking his shit on, on, on the internet. That's one thing that you do need to stop doing because that's not your place to do that. And it's not going to make you look any better. But what I will suggest that you do is get yourself some help. Contact the YWCA and ask them about the domestic violence shelter. I know it's somewhere you probably don't really want to be. But sometimes we got to go through a little struggle to get to where we really need to be and where we really need in life. And that's just a, a well-known fact. We got to go through the struggle to get where we need. And as for his bitch that he's fucking with, Erica, she got a husband, she got a dying daughter of cancer. I'm so sorry about her daughter, even though I don't know her. And the situation is kind of fucked up. That she, Yeah, she's fucking your ex-man and she's got a husband. But as far as her daughter, she doesn't play a role in this. And it's fucked up that her own mother will go ahead and take the funds that she's been receiving for charity for her daughter's cancer and trick out on this this dickless dick motherfucker. Like, and I'm going to call him a dickless dick because that's what the fuck he is. Diva. I'm really telling you to get yourself into a domestic violence shelter because you really don't know what people are capable of doing. And you can see so far what the fuck he's capable of doing, okay, by harassing you, threatening you, stalking you, intimidating you. That nigga don't give a fuck about no order of protections. He don't care. You've had to go get six or seven on him already since February, and here it is July. That nigga does not fucking care. So what makes you think that you posting shit on Facebook is going to make the situation any better? Leave his ass the fuck alone. Go get you some help from the domestic violence shelter. YWCA is known for helping battered women and their children. So if I were you, I would take my ass, get in the phone book, or go on Google and find the domestic violence shelter in your area and get yourself some help. Take it to you, use it to your advantage, and I'm not saying take advantage, but use it to your advantage because this is what you need right now. You have all your documents, you have all your ducks in a row, and now all you need to do is present this, and they will help you. They will help you find a new place to live. They may help you get first month's rent. I know a lot of people that have done this from my old prior job being um, working in the medical field. You know, this is something that I was able to look into and help others with so I know that they are a very good resource to help you help you and your family help you get on your feet help you relocate if you don't want to be in New York anymore you can go somewhere else but just get the fuck away from him before it's too late you have family you have grandchildren you have kids to take care of I would find myself a new borough outside of the Bronx okay and be safe and stop fucking being on Facebook with the social media shit. That is the number one problem out here. Everybody is so out of touch with their own emotions that they all they can see to do is go on social media and rant and rant and post people's business and shit out there. They don't got nothing better to do. And I'm not saying, Miss Tyre, that you ain't got nothing better to do. But from the looks of shit, I would not be worried about no Facebook postings about his starry ass. Please, you just you just fl I'm fuming more flame to the fire with that shit right there, and it's making the situation worse. So I would leave him alone and go get some help. So yes, y'all, let Miss Tyre know what you think about the situation, because baby, if it was me, I wouldn't be fucking around on Facebook, fucking with him and putting his business out there. I I wouldn't do that shit. That's just making it a whole lot worse. So here's the next one. Real talk, my mother's secret. And I thought this was a really good one. Now, hi, April. You can call me Robin. I've been a viewer for many years since your old channel, and I love your videos. For the sake of explaining my story, I added names you can use if you feel the need to do so. And I thank you for that, too. I apologize in advance for this being such a long message, but it has been on my mind for too long. Anyway, I'm a, I am a woman in my mid-20s, and my problem concerns my mom. My mother, Susan, and my father, Ted, have been married for over 30 years. They have always been very happy together. My father is a good, loving, and hardworking man who always puts his family first and put my mother on a pedestal. She's always had everything she wanted, and my father treated her like a queen. Growing up, I had the perfect mother, but now that woman is dead and gone. She started to drastically change about five years ago, but it has recently hit rock bottom. Last year, mom suddenly left my dad and took off to California. She lived out there for about six months while my father footed the bill. Then she randomly came back home in December and started acting like she wanted to be with my dad again. I hoped that she had come to her senses. However, in January, while using her phone, I discovered she has a secret boyfriend, Jimmy, 
out in California. It is now July, and I know that she is still in contact with Jimmy. She is unaware that I know. My father is a wealthy man, and he just retired. I think that my mom only came back for his money. She probably is going to take everything she can get and go back to California to be with her boyfriend, Jimmy. My dad doesn't deserve this, and I don't want this... I don't want his retirement retirement to be ruined by that money-hungry woman. I want to warn my father and confront my mother, but my brother told me not to. I want my happy family back. What should I do, Robin? So here goes another phone situation on someone's phone, but this is a totally different situation. And Robin, I am so sorry. You know, it's nice to have both parents growing up, but sometimes, unfortunately, it just doesn't work out like that. Um, now... Your parents are still together. Your mom left. What was her reasons for moving to California? Did she give your dad any reasons? Did she give you and your brothers any reasons? Um, what was her reasons? Okay, and then she just suddenly came back in December. Oh, it's funny how she came right back during Christmas time, huh? Okay. Now your dad is retired. He's got money. And you found out that your mom has been messing with some guy in California by the name of Jimmy. And she's still in contact with him. Well... You know, sometimes they are, what do they say? A kid needs to be in a kid's place. Stay in a kid's place. Well, we're not kids anymore. We're grown adults. So you're an adult. And you don't really have to stay in your place like that. This is your parents. This is your father. You would be wrong if you didn't say anything and you kept this, you know. Yes, that is your mother. But yes, that is your father as well. Some people put a lot of emphasis on, well, that's my mom. I wouldn't, I wouldn't betray her. That's my mom. But here's the thing. Her mom and her dad have been together since she's a kid, and they're still together. So she's not really betraying anyone. To me personally, I would feel like I was betraying myself and my father and my mom by not saying anything. It's dead wrong. It's wrong. And what I really feel like you need to do, Robin, is the first person you need to confront, the first, is your mother. Okay? This is the first person that you need to confront. Go out together. Take her to lunch. Don't do it in the home because you don't want anybody else hearing. You don't want your dad around. You want to have a girl's day out, okay? This makes it a lot more comfortable and more personable because you're spending time with your mom. You know, maybe do a little window shopping or shopping. And then at the end of it all, at the end of the, you know, the little venture, the little daytime out with your mom, go have a nice sit down at a nice quiet restaurant and have lunch together. And then that's when you bring it up with her, okay? So I say to do it like this because you don't want to just go to lunch and just throw it in her face, bam. You want to fill her out, take her out, go window shopping. Do some things that you both like together, okay? And just fill her out. Ask her how was California, you know. Try to question her, but don't be so obvious. Ask her how was California, how was her stay there, what made her come back home. You know, let her know how you feel about her. And then while you're at lunch, you know, continue talking to her. And then you let her know, hey, you know, mom, I love you. You're my mother. I have much respect for you. However, I do know, I do know that you are committing adultery. And I don't know really which way to use because it's your mom, but you could just basically say, you know, mom, I know that you're seeing someone behind dad's back. And we need to have a talk about this because I don't feel like it's fair to dad. You know, just let it roll off your tongue, but whatever you do, just don't be disrespectful about it. But this is what I need you to do first. You need to confront your mom about it first and foremost. She's the first person that you need to confront. You don't want to go to your dad and be like, oh yeah, she's cheating on you, blah, blah, blah. Or you don't want to explode during an argument or confrontation with your mom and you say, because that's not going to make the situation any better either. So what is really important is the communication and the way you go about letting this out. And I really do feel like this is an important thing for you to do um, because this is your parents and this is their lives. And if she is back to get your dad's money and go back to Jimmy, then it's not right. And your dad does need to be warned. Because let me tell you something to you, Robin. What if you don't tell your father? And what if your feeling, your gut feeling is true? And then she takes your dad for everything you, that he has and goes back to this next dude. How are you going to feel? You are going to feel a whole lot worse that you did not say anything and you did not warn him. And then if you tell your dad, I knew, but I didn't know what to say. He's not going to be too happy that you kept this secret from him. 
parents don't like us to keep things from them and it's always best to have an open relationship with your parents so that's why I say in the beginning you need to go and talk to your mom first outside of the home and let her know and tell her we're gonna have to have a sit down we're going to have to sit down and tell dad because if you don't let him know I'm going to let him know and it's only fair some people like you know stay out of it that's not your business but so, this is your business okay this is your business because this is your family and this is your parents and this is their lives and if you don't do something about it the situation may get worse and then your dad is going to be the one that's taken advantage of and you yourself have already said she's money hungry and if you're feeling that type of way about your mom and you're feeling one way about your dad it's only fair that you mention this to her and mention this to your dad you know what I mean but just don't come out blatantly and say oh well you know yeah your brother may say not to say anything but he and you are two different people. You're two different types of species. He's a male, you're a female. We have more emotions and things. Sometimes men don't want to say things because they're not, they're not so emotional. They're not emotional creatures like we are. You know, some things they just rather not know about or they don't care about or they don't take it to heart as we would take it. We're different. We're more nurturing as women. So in my best interest, and if it were me, if it were me, I would tell my dad. I would. And you know something? It's, it's, you know, my dad has been married four times. My dad has been married four times. I'm his first child. Um, so my dad has been married four times um, and to all different nationalities of women. My mom was the first black woman um, that he married. Um, and then my stepmom, my first stepmom, she's a native Indian. Then my third stepmom, my second stepmom, she is a Caucasian woman, a white woman. And then my third stepmom, she's a Philippine. So he went from African American, Native American, Caucasian, and Philippine. That's my dad. He has had four wives, okay? Four wives. And my dad is um, Italian. So yeah, he's Italian um, and half Italian. Well, his dad is Italian. His mom is black. So my dad, he likes to spread the love. <laughs> he likes to spread the love. But there was a time when my second stepmom, the white one, she, um, when I was living in Pennsylvania with my dad for two years, um, she um, just started feeling distance from my dad. Me and her were really close. Sandy, my, my stepmom, my second stepmom. Sandy and I were really close. We're all I'm really close with all of them, all his wives. Um, the new one, Norma, she's not really new anymore, but I love her to death. She's like the best stepmom ever. But Sandy and I were really close. You know, I was a teenager. She would look after me. She would teach me womanly things. I was a teenager at the time. And she started feeling distance. Her and my dad would argue a lot. She would always come and talk to me. You know, I was 16. And she did. She started cheating on my dad. Um, unfortunately, I didn't say anything to my dad about it because I wasn't really that close with my dad. I lived with my mom all my life. So I really wasn't there for my dad. I really didn't want to be in Pennsylvania. I wanted to go back home to New York City. But I never said anything to my dad about it. Um, she didn't come right out and tell me she was cheating, but I knew. You know, you can always tell. And I never said anything about it. And my dad found out a few years later and they divorced. And now my stepmom or my ex-stepmom, she's with the boyfriend that she was cheating on my, husband, my dad with. And my dad is with Norma now. Um, I had, my dad has had relationships with after my second stepmom. But he finally found, I think this one here, Norma, is a winner. Well, my dad's like 63 now, so 65. So, yeah, she's a winner, okay? She's a lifer now. But, I, you know, when I look back at it, um, me and my dad have become really close over the years, like so close. And I love him to pieces. Like, I would do anything for that man. That is my dad. And, unfortunately, it wasn't like that when I was growing up. But now, you know, we get older and we learn more. And I wish that I would have said something to him about it because that's some snake shit. Like, to me, that's some real snake shit. You don't do stuff like that. And if I would have had the guts and I would have had more respect for him back then, I would have said something to him. So, yeah, that's your mom but and that's your dad. And they both deserve the best. And if you feel like she's there for your, mom, your dad's money, don't let him be taken advantage of because that would not feel right. That wouldn't sit right with you if you know that and that's what happened. It wouldn't sit right with you at, at all. And what was our whole reason for going to California? You went to California, what, was it to get a breather? 
and to get away. You needed time to think for six months. You needed to do your thing. You just needed time to yourself. In the meantime, you was there. You was meeting up and shacking up with Jimmy. Why, why'd you come back? You came back around the holidays. Were you looking for Christmas gifts? Were you running low on funds or what have you? Why? Why did you come back? You know, take her out for a girl's day out. Do some window shopping. See if she's up for that. And just go out to lunch and, you know, strike up the conversation and let her know. I know about Jimmy. And you explain yourself. Of course she's not going to like what you got to say. And of course she's probably going to deny it. And she's probably going to put that motherly foot down and let you know to stay out of her business. She's your mother. But you're a grown woman, Robin. And you know what's best for you and your family. And to avoid your dad being hurt and taking advantage of, I would definitely say something. So, on that note, divas, this was a long Real Talk. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I did two, of course. Last week I did three. I tried to get them pushed out there. But let Miss Tired know, and also let Robin know, how would you feel? It's all about the phones. Everybody's going to somebody's fucking phone. You know, I've had that situation. Had nothing to do with a cheat, though. I wasn't cheating, but you know what I'm saying. My oldest son, who's 23, disrespectful ass, went through my phone and seen I was talking to some other guy. Listen, it's not your business that I'm not with my ex-husband. You, It's not your business. See, this is the type of shit that me and him get into. He's grown. He thinks that he's my father. But I'm the mother. And he, he went through my phone, too. Some people can just be this. I don't even know the right words to say to it, but you know what? It's all about the phones for this face, for this real talk situation and Facebook situations and shit. Like, that's why I don't post too much of my business on Facebook and stuff because some shit is just left, better left to yourself. Not People don't need to know everything. People don't need to know where you're at all the time. That's how your house gets robbed. People don't need to know where you're, do where you're going, what you're doing all the time. I just think people that get on social media give too much information in, about their daily fucking lives. Like, chill the fuck out and just stop it. You know, if I post something about what I went and did with my kids, a picture, that picture won't get posted later that night or the next day. Because I don't really need you to know where I'm at at that very given moment. Because I don't need you to come in my house and try to rob me or stalk me where I'm at. So... It's just some things are just better left to keep to yourselves. Like, learn that, people. It's social media. It's not tell all your business media. Yeah. So on that note, stay diva and divalicious. And make sure to leave a comment if you want to see how to hold up them girls for real cheap. And <laughs> let me know what you think of the new background. Okay, the new scenery. Let me know what you think of the new scenery. And as well as that, as uh, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys soon. Don't forget that that giveaway is going on for my balayage highlight her imports hair. If you want some free hair, make sure to check out that video. And all the information and directions will be in that video. So make sure you take a look at that balayage highlights. And um, yeah, I will see you guys soon. And stay diva and divalicious. This is for my babies. My beautiful baby